Hello everyone, Maggie Higgins here from the St. John Art Center. I'm an artist and an educator, and every week I bring you a fun new art activity that you can do while you're staying safe at home. This week we're going to make our very own scratch board artworks. It's a new technique that will reveal beautiful, colorful artwork that you'll want to keep doing over and over again, and will get a little bit messy. Before I tell you what all the supplies we're going to need today, it's a good idea for you to prepare your workspace. So, lay down some newspaper or some scrap paper, maybe put on your art shirt or your art smock, whatever you have, because we're going to get a little bit messy today. Okay, I'm going to tell you what supplies we'll need today. The first thing we're going to need is colorful paper. So, this paper is a little bit thicker, uh, so it's kind of like a cardstock. You can use colorful paper. If you only have white paper, that works too. And the smaller, the better. <laughs> I like to do something that is no bigger than a regular size piece of letter paper, or even a little bit smaller, because your hands will get tired from all the coloring we're gonna do if you go way too big. But if you keep it nice and small, it'll be fine. Crayons, oil pastels, it doesn't really matter what colors you have as long as there's a, a dark color. I'll use black for this assignment, but you can use a dark blue, purple, dark green, brown, whatever you have will work. Paper towel. This is really important because we get a little bit messy in this and so we want paper towel to be able to clean off our hands and our tools. A plastic butter knife. Maybe you have a plastic palette knife or clay tools, those will work as well. This is gonna be used to scrape off our pastels and reveal our beautiful drawings underneath. All right, now that we have all our supplies and our workspace is set up, we can get started. Remember, you can follow along with me, but certainly you do not have to do exactly what I do. Art is all about experimenting and making it your own. So I wanna see what you create. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap my crayon so that I can get more of the color and I'm gonna cover my whole page with crayon. So you can do this uh, just one color or maybe a few different colors. I decided today I'm gonna do one color all the way over and you wanna make sure all of your page is covered. So then I decided to go in with this yellow and when you layer crayon on top of each other, it creates really interesting, um, very rich colors. So this is kind of like a peach and it also helps you to cover even more of the page if you do a few layers of crayon. Basically what we wanna do is create a nice slippery surface of wax so that when we put our oil pastel on and then we scrape it off, it'll slick right off so now I'm going in with my black pastel, I'm using the side of it, and I'm going all the way in one direction, coating it evenly, and then all the way in another direction, coating it evenly. And as you can see, some of the paper is still showing through. I don't want that. So I am going to try to fill in as much as I can. So I'm filling in and I'm just pushing that oil pastel around and it's okay if there's little dots like what we have here. It's never gonna be perfect, perfect, uh, but I like that look. It gives it some texture in the background and, and kind of interesting, so I don't mind that at all. Next, what I'm gonna do is get my plastic knife and I'm gonna begin drawing my subject. So I've decided to draw a peony, which is one of my favorite flowers, and what I like about it is uh, it has big, uh, lush petals and a very interesting shape, so that's why I decided to draw that today. So I'm just doing the outline first, some leaves there, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to start uh, removing the pastel where I want the petals to be pink. So the interesting part about this kind of project is that it makes you reverse your thinking. So usually we draw and we put color under the page, but in this instance, we're going to be taking the black off and revealing the color underneath. So you kind of have to think a little bit backwards. This is called a subtractive process, which means just like in math class, instead of adding color, we're subtracting the black and showing the color underneath. I really like this pink showing through and the black on top gives it a little bit of texture. I'm also keeping the outlines around the petal, so I'm not scraping those off. And the reason for that is it creates a kind of contrast so that you can actually see where one petal ends and another begins. Now it's a good idea in this project to make sure that you are every now and then wiping off your plastic knife with the paper towel. This way, you're not just smudging the black back onto the page, uh, you're actually removing it and then you're cleaning your knife and you're gonna find it a lot easier to continue after you've cleaned it. So you wanna do that every mm, scrapes and get all those crumbs and curls of pastel off. 
you'll find that your hands get pretty messy in this and so it's a good idea to try not to touch anything you don't want to get a, a nice little coating of oil pastel which includes your face sometimes I do this project and I walk away and I notice that I have a whole lot of uh, black smudges all over my face or my arms or my clothes so it's a good idea just to be aware of where you're putting your hands So now I'm going to go into the leaves and what I've decided to do is give them a different texture than the petals. And so leaves have often a really interesting kind of pattern on them. They have a spine down the middle and they have um, little lines kind of flowing off of that. So that's the structure of a leaf. So I'm going to add that in by only scraping away in between those ridges. And so as you can see here, it starts to kind of look like a leaf. And so what's really nice about this kind of project is you can really observe textures and different um, patterns on the surfaces of objects as you draw them and it'll look really realistic that way. And so it's good to get out of our normal way of drawing and you start to notice more and more, it makes you think, how can I really represent that? How am I gonna really make that look like what I want it to look like? Now what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of highlight all around the flower just for an added a touch of highlight so it almost looks like the petals are glowing and they're defined and that is it for the flower but I decided you know what the outside is a little too dark so I think I want to add in some elements in the sky around it so I've decided to add a couple little bumblebees so they are flying around the peony and maybe trying to get some nectar and here it is all finished so I'm really happy with this project. I think um, it turned out quite well. Again, you can draw absolutely anything you want. You can experiment with this over and over again. That's why it's good to start small so you can make more of them and get better and better or discover new things as you go. And I really love the shapes, the lines, and the different material. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a lot of fun making your own scratchboard artwork. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to learn more, you can visit our website, sjartcenter.ca. And if you'd like to support us, you can visit our website, sjartcenter.ca slash donate and leave a donation there. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye.